So question for you. <clears throat> Have you ever looked at something that a different author is doing, such as how quickly they publish, how often they publish, the stories they're writing, the ads they're running, anything like that, and think to yourself, well, I wish I could do that, but I just don't think I'm built that way. I hear this from a lot of struggling authors and a lot of up and coming authors, and it always makes me kind of sad because I got to tell you that you guys do not understand the potential you have. You have an epic story in you that only you can tell, and you are cutting short your own abilities by saying things like that. Now, I do understand that part of the problem is you just don't know how to overcome whatever problems you're having that are in your way and change your paradigm so that you can achieve success. You know, it's much easier said than done. I get that. I really do. But that's what we are going to talk about today. That's what I am here for as a fiction author coach. And we're going to talk today about how to actually change your paradigm so that you can achieve success and basically just get out of your own way. I have talked about this or talked around it in a lot of... Um, recent episodes, you know, I talked about, you know, how to call the muse. I've talked about um, if you're following all the writing advice and it's not working for you. But today I'm actually going to give you some steps that you can take to help change your mindset so that you don't have that problem anymore. Okay, stay tuned. Hi there, aspiring fiction author. Welcome to Fiction Author Business School. Do you want to write your stories with ease and confidence? Do you find yourself Googling how to write a fiction book or how to write a character arc? If you want to create a fiction empire, but you can't even finish the story you're currently working on, and you find yourself doubting it will even be good enough, hi, I'm Liesl. I too have been writing stories since I was just a kid. I wanted to do something about my fiction writing dreams, but got information overload every time I looked for writing help, because there's just so much out there on the internet. I wanted confidence that I wouldn't disappoint my readers, and a plan to publish regularly. I knew the foundation of any author career, including the marketing aspect, is a stellar and well-written story, but I didn't know how to be sure that my story was solid. I went on a journey to figure out what really makes readers tick and how to incorporate those addictive elements into my story. In this podcast, you'll find specific tactical fiction writing tips, solutions to writing more words more efficiently, and secrets to mastering your author mindset. So put on your fuzzy slippers, grab a notebook and pen and some chocolate, and let's write some fiction. All right, so first and foremost, maybe we should get some uh, definitions going here. What exactly is a paradigm and why should you change it, right? So a paradigm just means your mindset and beliefs, okay? So that's that's a really simplified way of putting it, and you're welcome to look it up and, you know, be the writer that you are and get into the nitty-gritty of the definition, but really that's what it boils down to, okay? It is your mindset and it is your belief, and it has to be both of those things because one influences the other. Specifically, your beliefs are going to influence your mindset. Now, there is, and this is listen closely to this and really, really try to internalize it, okay? This is so important for what you need to learn in order to change your paradigm. There is a big difference between saying we believe something and actually believing it, okay? Now, this is the kind of thing that people can get really defensive about, and I completely understand why. Um, if you go up to someone and say, oh, well, I understand that you're saying you believe that, but you don't actually believe it. Yeah, you're going to get punched in the face. You're going to piss them off pretty quickly, and understandably so, okay? But despite that, despite people um, having every reason to be defensive about it, that doesn't change the fact that most of us say we believe things, but we don't believe them in our core. We don't believe them on a subconscious level. This is why things like positive thinking and affirmations alone don't necessarily work for manifesting things, okay? If it was that simple, every single person in the world would be a millionaire because all of us have sat somewhere and said, okay, I'm gonna manifest a million dollars and it never materializes, right? Well, that doesn't mean that manifestation doesn't work. It doesn't mean that the law of attraction is a load of crap. It just means that there's more to it than that. It's not that simple, obviously, or everybody would have everything they want all the time. And that's just not the way it works, okay? Let's use some examples of how we can see in the world around us that sometimes people say one thing and believe another. Um, one example is people who constantly repeat abusive relationships, okay? You could say to someone who is constantly, you know, choosing partners, for example, who abuse them, you could say something like, you deserve better, you deserve to be in a relationship where your partner loves and adores you and treats you well, and that person would probably say, yeah, yeah, I know, I believe that. 
So they're saying they believe it, but they always go back to that kind of relationship. Why is that? It's because on a a subconscious level, they don't believe it. They don't believe that they deserve better. They don't believe that it's possible to find something better. So then they end up repeating the same patterns. And we see this a lot, you know, in our world and people that we know, and perhaps even in our own lives, okay? You could say the same thing for people who abuse others. You know, have you ever said, why would someone who went through that, and it doesn't have to be abuse, it can be anything, but why would they perpetrate that same thing on other people when they went through it and it was horrible? Well, it's because on a subconscious level, they believe that there is some upside to it. And when it comes to abuse, what it, what it usually is, psychology tells us, is that because someone else abused them and sort of gained power over them using that abuse, they feel like the only way to gain control over their own lives is to abuse others because they learned that power dynamic and now they believe that on some subconscious level, okay? So it's not really about hurting other people for them. And I know that sounds like I'm justifying or something. I'm not. It's horrible either way. But in their mind, what their logic for it would be because they learned that anyone who is in power has to do that, has to come into power and keep their power through abuse. So that's what they do. They end up abusing other people sometimes. Um, an example of a, st- like I, I've wanted to think of a couple of examples of stories or films where you might be able to see something like this. The first one that came to mind is uh, Goodwill Hunting, which is kind of an old movie now. It was uh, the movie that made Matt Damon and Ben Affleck famous. At the very end of that, Matt Damon's character is someone who has dealt with a lot of abuse in his life. And Robin Williams says to him, none of this was your fault. And Matt Damon says, yeah, I know. And then Robin Williams just has to repeat it over and over and over again until uh, Matt Damon actually breaks down in tears. And it's because just saying it was not enough. He says he believes that, but he doesn't really believe it. And you kind of had to break through because he was putting up a defense there, right? So again, it's somebody who says they believe something, but really deep in their core, they don't believe it. They believe something else. Um, Another kind of goofy and fun example would be the movie Skeleton Key, and that's because that movie deals with voodoo. It's more of a horror thriller kind of thing, and it's sort of in reverse, but I actually think when you think about it from from this point of view, it it's, makes it really interesting. Um, that movie is about um, a woman who goes into a situation not really believing in voodoo and magic very much, and the entire movie is her kind of coming around to this may actually be real. And then at the end of the movie, she finds out that she's in this trap and her believing in voodoo is what's going to be her undoing. So once she realizes that, she starts saying over and over again, I don't believe, I don't believe, I don't believe, I don't believe, but she does. And so it does have a horror movie, you know, quote unquote horror movie ending because it does not end well for her. And it was because she believed it and couldn't make herself not believe it at that point that again became her undoing and it really sucks for her at the end of the movie right so those are just some examples um so i guess my point in telling you all of this is that you can even say i think i can write a thousand words a day or five thousand words a day but if you don't believe it in your core that you can do that you're still going to have a hard time doing it so i'm trying to get you guys you know train yourselves to get away from saying well, I, I sat and I meditated and I, I tried to manifest that and I did affirmations and it didn't work, therefore that doesn't work, okay? No, that's, that's not the case. You just have to keep trying. You have to keep practicing. It's like anything else. And that kind of brings me to my second point. Nobody, <laughs> whoever manifested the life they wanted, did it on the first try, ever, okay? That's not the way it works. Um, very often you'll hear people talk about manifesting as a muscle that needs to be practiced with and trained and honed, okay? Because just like your physical muscles, it's not going to happen overnight. So you have to kind of differentiate believing you can do it in the long run, but also don't get discouraged if it doesn't happen right away, okay? So it would be like me saying right now, I believe I can go run a marathon. Well, I do believe that. I believe that if I train, if I put in the time and the energy and the effort, I can get to the point where I can run a marathon. But if I were to put on my tennis shoes right now, walk out the door and try to run 26 miles, it's not even a matter of, you know, I would die. It's just, I, I wouldn't 
come anywhere close to that, I would drop after probably four or five miles, right? Because I know that I do not have my body in the shape that it needs to be to complete a marathon right now. But that's what people do when it comes to manifesting, okay? They say, okay, well, people say I can manifest money if I want it. So I'm going to sit here for five minutes and close my eyes and you know, think about money and have a good feeling and and I'm going to manifest that money. And then when it doesn't happen, they throw up their hands and say, well, that doesn't work. Well, <laughs> okay, like anything else, you got to practice and you'll get better and better at, at it as you go along. If you do it correctly, it does have results. I've seen them in my own life. But I also didn't manifest every single thing I wanted the very first time I ever sat down to meditate. Okay, it doesn't work that way. So that's something to keep in mind. Just like anything else, it's something that needs to be practiced. And it's definitely much easier to start small and then work your way up. So just like with marathon training, I would probably start by uh, running a mile and then running two miles and then running six miles and, you know, kind of working my way up that way. And the same thing happens with belief. So in order to tie, to tie this into writing, here's what I'll tell you. Once you've done something, you have the confidence that you can do it again, right? So if you have a hard time writing more than 200 words per writing session and you try to sit down and write 10,000 words, that's going to be really hard. Chances are you're not going to be able to do it. And even if you do, you will be so burnt out that you'll never want to do it again. Okay, so it's just not the right way to go about it. But you know you can write 200 words. Then if you just add on maybe another 100 words, then you write 300. And now you know you can write 300 because you've done it before. So then move up to 400. Hey, look at that. I've done 400 words and it didn't kill me. I can do 400. And if you slowly move up like that, just like you would anything else, learning any skill, you start small and then you do harder things as, as time goes on. That is how you'll get better at it. And the same is true of manifesting. And the same is true of any kind of writing advice that you want to take, right? So if you want to be an outliner and you're just not one, you can make yourself into an outliner. And this is where people become very defensive and very stubborn. They say, no, 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 I can't outline. I tried that once and it didn't work and I'm just a pantser. Now, don't get me wrong. Nothing wrong with pantsing, nothing wrong with outlining. If it is something that you love to do it that way and you want to do it that way, then more power to you. I'm here to support you. But if there is something you want, that's how I started this episode. You look at another author and say, I wish I could do that like they do. I wish I could do it as well as they do. You can get yourself to that point, okay? So here's the thing. Contrary to popular belief, just because your brain isn't wired to do something right now doesn't mean that it can't be, okay? You can train your brain to do anything you want it to do. Okay, and I understand why people think that they can't do that. I mean, everything in our society tells us that, you know, your brain basically can't be changed. Science tells us differently, and most of us know better um, logically, but we're still told that that's not the case, or if it is, that it's so hard, why do you even try, you know? Um, I tried to think of an example of this, and people who know me are going to laugh because... I study serial killers a lot. So the example that came to me is a serial killer example. Um, guys, up until like the 90s, I mean, pretty recently, honestly, law enforcement and psychologists and everybody who studied any kind of murderer or serial killer believed that once serial killers began killing, they could not stop. It was so compulsory for them that there would just be no way they could ever stop on their own. And that's why, of course, we have to catch them. We have to make sure that they are not hurting anyone else. Well, in recent years, in recent decades, that has been proven to be untrue. Um, I'm sure it's happened with more than one person, but the one that I know of is the Green River Killer. And he actually stopped killing for, it was a long time, like 20 years. And they captured him like 20 years later on some old DNA, and he hadn't actually committed any crimes in like a couple of decades. And they were really, really shocked that he was able to just stop like that because he wanted to. And they asked him, they said, well, what made you decide to stop killing? And his answer was that he had gotten married again. And he had been married a couple of times. I want to say that this woman he was talking about was his third wife, but don't quote me on that. Um, and of course, she didn't know anything about him being a serial killer. She was a genuinely lovely, decent human being. None of his wives ever knew about his secret life as a killer. But when he married this woman, 
he genuinely loved her and even though she didn't know about it he wanted to be a better man for her so he stopped killing and that just absolutely blew everyone's mind that a serial killer could do that my point is that we can train our brains to do whatever we want them to do i mean (laughs) maybe this is a little bit ridiculous to say but guys if a serial killer can stop what he's doing just because he wants to puts his mind to it and does it we can figure out our writing processes, right? I mean, that's really small potatoes by comparison. And consider this. Was anyone who ever accomplished anything big or created a positive or productive habit born that way? Of course not. They always had to work for it. And it is work. You have to do the work, right? I mean, read any self-help or any biography ever written, okay? these people in order to accomplish great things had to do the work they were not born that way um another example i thought of when i was thinking about this is a an interview i saw years ago years ago with jim carrey and they were asking him about his exercise habits and he talked about how he was just a treadmill guy he got on the treadmill every day and ran and that's how he stayed in shape and being jim carrey he made lots of jokes and was um, kind of razzing on different types of exercise. Apparently, he's not a Pilates guy, so he was, you know, making all kinds of jokes about Pilates and all that. But one thing that I, I always remember that he said is that he was kind of razzing these exercise programs that claim that you can do it in 15 or 20 minutes a day. He he was really firm about that, and he said, no, it's not 15 minutes a day. It is an hour. I get on there, and I run for an hour. And by doing that, he never has to worry about losing his physique. It keeps him in shape doing that. And I was I was impressed by that because not that there's anything wrong with doing a workout in 15 minutes, if that is what works for you, but he was not trying to cut corners. He knew what it would take to make sure that he could keep his physique as an actor, and he did it every single day without question. And I'm sure he wasn't born being able to run for an hour on the treadmill every day, but he worked up to it once you know he got to the point where that's something he wanted to do. And it got to a point where it was fairly easy for him to do because it was just a habit now, right? And that's where we want to be. I'm not going to ever say that running on the treadmill for an hour is not work. And I'm certainly not going to tell you that writing a book, a novel, much less a series or many novels, is not work. It will always be work. But you can get your brain to the point where you can do it fairly easily because you've done it before and because you've trained your brain to do that thing. And that is really what we are looking for, right? It's about being disciplined. And if you remember my podcast where I talked about discipline, discipline is just repeating something over and over again until it becomes a habit. And habits, again, I, I, I'm hesitant to say they're easy because I'm not ever going to actually tell you that writing a book is easy, but we do it without thinking about it, right? We can just sit down and do it and it's not a big deal, right? And that is what we're looking for. So The next question then is how do we do that? I told you I would give you some actual steps that will help you to shift your paradigm so that you can find success and get your writing done. Now, this is not just, you know, block out time and create your workspace. All of those things are important and I've talked about them before on the podcast, but we're gonna go a level deeper here. We need to figure out your unconscious beliefs. We need to figure out what's blocking you from being able to do the work to create your writing habit. Okay. So the first thing you need to do, step number one, take out a paper and pencil or sit down at your keyboard. Step number one is you need to identify what you already believe. And this is what you actually believe. So let's talk about how to do this. You can say, I believe I can write 5,000 words a day. But let me ask you this, after saying that, after declaring that belief, do you have doubts? Do you worry that you're not gonna be able to stick with it? Do you worry that you're not gonna have enough time? Do you worry that when it comes right down to it, you're kinda not gonna wanna do it and you're gonna watch Netflix instead? All of those things, you would, you know, I just called them doubts and that's probably what you would call them, but those are reflections of your true belief and your true belief is that you are not gonna be able to do this. So don't write down what you want to believe or what sounds good, what sounds sexy as a belief. Write down what you actually believe. Write down what your doubts are. Write down what is holding you back from doing whatever it is you want to do. And I've been talking this whole time about a writing habit and getting your words down, but if that's not your issue, then what is your issue? Write down your issue. Um, 
You're not finishing your story because you think it won't be good enough. You're not diving into ads because you don't think you have enough money or you don't know how to do them. Um, you're not publishing your stuff because you're too afraid to show others what you've written and you're afraid of their opinions and their judgments. Okay, whatever your problem is, write it down and then identify what you actually believe about it. And the secret is it's going to be hidden in those doubts that come after you've made a declaration. Okay, write those things down, figure them out. Um, then I want you to use curiosity and write some statements. Okay, so this is number two. Curiosity is a very powerful tool when it comes to manifesting because curiosity is actually an act of faith. So by curiosity, I just mean I want you to write some statements that are what if statements. What if I actually could write 5,000 words in a single sitting? What if I actually could finish my work in progress? What if I showed my writing to someone and they liked it? Okay, write these statements down. You need some what if statements because again, curiosity, just the idea of maybe doing that is an act of faith and it shows the universe that you're willing to take a chance and that you believe something good can come of this. So just writing those things down and really kind of feeling them, take a minute to feel it in your chest and say, what if this happened and it was kind of magical, right? So the next thing I want you to do is I want you to take whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish and chunk it up into bite-sized steps. So again, the easiest thing to uh, use is, is writing words. Like I said before, if you want to write 5,000 words a day, start by writing, you know, wherever you're at. Say you're writing 500 a day now. Great. Do that for a week. Then the next week say, okay, now I'm going to write 600. Do that for a week. Or, or longer. It, it, I mean, I wouldn't put necessarily an arbitrary, um, uh, like a calendar goal on it. I would just keep doing it until it's easy. Until Because, you know, maybe the first few times you jump from 500 to 600, it's genuinely hard to get those extra 100 words down. But once you're doing 600 and you're not even thinking about it, then move up, you know, move the goalpost and go for a bigger word count. Um, however long it takes, just do it. Okay, and that's what I mean. Chunk it into smaller things. Um, let's use a different... Uh, example as well. So say you're trying to finish your book. Maybe you've got it all mapped out and you just got to go chapter by chapter. Sit down, figure out when you're going to write, do it a piece at a time. Um, if you are, want to show your work to somebody, take the chapter you think is best and start showing it to a few people. And once you've gotten some good feedback on it, then you'll feel a little braver and maybe be able to show some more. So just whatever you're trying to do, take it and map out the steps that you need to take to get where you want to be, and then just start accomplishing them. Don't worry about how long it takes. Don't worry about um, not being where you want to be yet. It is going to take some time and it is going to take some work, but just start um, conquering each step until you don't just believe you can do that anymore, you know you can because you've done it already. That's where you want to be. And every time you do that, the next step will be easier, but you're taking small steps and trying instead of trying to make a big leap, okay? So that's number three, map out the steps. Number four, this is a big one. I want you to expect good things. It is not going to help you to go into something expecting the worst, okay? And I know this is hard when you get nervous. I get it. But if you're going to show someone your work and you're a little nervous about it, expect that they will like it. Expect that if they give you critiques, that they will be good and will help you improve your writing, right? If you're going to um, start running ads for your books, expect that they will work, that you will be able to figure it out. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that the first time you do it, it's going to work like a charm. But by expecting good things, you will be setting yourself up to figure out how to get it to work. And that's really, really key, you guys. It's more important than you think it is. You need to expect good things to happen. If you are expecting bad things to happen, guess what? Bad things going to happen. So expect good things to happen. And number five, I want you, I kind of already talked about this, I want you to expect easy things to happen. And by that, I mean, before, before you go into anything new, say to yourself, I can do this easily. I can write 750 words in an hour easily. Even if that's not the case right now, if you tell yourself that it's easy, then you're, it's going to become easy for you a whole lot faster. Okay, so let's recap those real fast. First, you need to identify what you already believe. And it's not what you wanna believe, it's what your doubts are telling you. It's what is 
truly holding you back from doing what you want to do. That's what you truly believe. And it's if, you know, just the fact that you're having trouble with this thing, it's probably a really negative belief, but you need to confront that. You need to write it down, know what it is so that you can overcome it. Okay. Figure out what you really believe. Then you're going to start to turn that belief around by using curiosity and saying, what if, what if I did this and it worked? What if I actually could do this thing I've been struggling with? What if I, you know, did something new that I've never done before that makes me nervous and it goes really, really well. Just use that curiosity to start turning that belief around. And then when you actually do it and it does go well, your beliefs, your core uh, subconscious beliefs will start to change. Um, then you're going to map out the steps you need to get to the place you want to go with whatever you're struggling with. And keep in mind, you can change this along the way. It's by no means set in stone. So Maybe at first you map out five steps and then as you get going, you realize I'm going to need a lot more steps than that. I'm going to need like 15 steps. That's fine. Sit down, map them out. Guys, I do this all the time. Usually it's with projects that I think I'm going to be able to finish in a week and then it's going to take me three weeks. And so at some point I have to reevaluate and realize that I don't have as much time as I thought. And so we're going to you know, spread this out a little bit more. Um, that's fine. Just do that. But map out the steps you're going, to st you're going to take to get where you need to go and then start conquering them one by one until they become second nature to you. You'll be amazed how fast it goes. You'll be amazed what you can do in a very short amount of time. Okay. Uh, number four, make sure and expect good things. Go into any situation, anything you're trying to learn, anything you're trying to conquer with believing that things are going to go well. It will help a lot. <laughs> and number five, expect easy things. Uh, go in thinking to yourself, I can do this and I can do it easily. And it might not be easy the first time, but by thinking that every single time you do it, it will become easy. It will become second nature to you much, much more quickly. Okay. So if you're trying to overcome li limiting beliefs, especially about your writing, take these steps and see what happens. Just, you know, like I said, be curious and be willing to admit where your beliefs may be failing you. And if you can change those internal beliefs, you will be able to change your outward behavior and you'll be, so, you'll be surprised how much easier it is to create a habit once you've changed those internal beliefs, okay? This is something that I'm going to be teaching in my next course and I'm, be, I'm gonna be teaching it in a lot more detail, but I would love it if you guys would start with these steps and let me know how it goes and if your writing becomes any easier when you do them. And keep in mind, like I said, it takes practice. So doing it once and then deciding it doesn't work, you're just selling yourself short. You're, you're curtailing your own potential by doing that. You got to practice it. You got to keep honing it until you get really, really good at it. And then one day you'll find that you're actually really good at changing your internal beliefs. You'll be really good at recognizing them. And then it'll be a piece of cake to get them fixed because you're good at doing this now. So that's my challenge to you. I hope that you can use this to start overcoming anything that you're having trouble with when it comes to your writing and that you have a wonderful week of writing overall. Meanwhile, I will see you guys back here, same time, same place next week. Bye. Thanks so much for listening today. Before you go, would you be willing to do me a solid? If you found any value at all in this episode today, would you be willing to share it with other authors just like you in the hopes that they might find some value in it as well? Happy story crafting this week. Remember, only you can bring the world the unique story that you are trying to tell. Only you can succeed in your own unique way in getting it out of your mind and your heart and into a medium where it can reach thousands if not millions of salivating readers. You don't have to worry about failure because there is always a market for awesome.